16th zone in the red zone. Up church. Cutback. Touchdown. Sets, waits, fires, intercepted in the end zone, and coming out is Robert Lester. And Lester's got his first. You don't have to be a junior or senior to become a leader on the team. Sims intercepted by Hightower. Hightower, he wants six. Dante Hightower. McCarron, play fake, slip screen out to the wide receiver. It's Cooper, and Cooper runs by everybody. Touchdown. McCarron again, no pressure. Gets a block from Vogler to give him time to go deep. And here's a one on one. Derek Henry gets free. Here goes Henry. Right on in. Cam Sims gave him support with a block. Pressure. Fumble picked up by Alabama. Sean Robinson has it first and goal. Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson. And I mentioned this is Eddie Jackson. Well, all day to throw. And now we will we'll throw. And he threw a strike to Rubs down the sideline. Rubs has five catches on the year. It's up the corner. Time of our steps away from it and throws deep middle. Tano tried to get there, the ball comes out. Trayvon Diggs running down the sideline. Trayvon Diggs, nobody's going to catch him. 50 percent passer so far, but he did have a really pretty touchdown pass. And now the ball is out. Alabama picks it up. Malachi Moore will walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. You see Anderson look at his chops. Hooker throws it around to Alabama. Chase McGrath for the win for the Volunteers. From 40. On the way, a knuckleball. He got it! picture in your mind whether or not you're a Tennessee fan or just a spectator watching this video I want you to picture what it's like being an Alabama fan in this day and age 
You have been through years and years and years of perpetual amounts of success, only to find out that that's all coming to a streaking halt. You beat Tennessee 15 years in a row, and then it all came crashing down in 2022 thanks to a man named Josh Bergen Heupel. You got to parade around this big old streak as if you guys were the kings of the college football world. And for a while, you were. I'm not going to take that away from you. But then again, who cares? That's all in the past now. So far back in the past, Florida might as well start talking about their 2008 natty. Alabama sucks. And being an Alabama fan has to suck right now, too. Like I said, you guys have experienced years and years and years and years of championships and huge amounts of talent and success left and right and middle, and now it's all crashing down. At least in your mind, at least. In any other position, any other fan would love to be in Alabama's position. 10 win seasons, and in Alabama's mind, that is a pretty bad season. Which brings me to my next point. Alabama fans are the biggest sore losers on planet friggin' Earth. And I didn't figure that out until we finally beat these sons of bitches. Man, I cannot believe how much of a sore loser these Bama fans are. And they're, and they're just, they're so mad. Okay, so... We beat Bama last year, right? Miracle game-winning field goal. Tennessee rushes the field. Jermaine Burton punches uh, a, a, a sorority girl because he was scared. Uh, all this other stuff. And Alabama fans came out with it. They literally, it was a book. I'm, I'm, this is a heavy backpack, and this is where all of Bama's excuses came from. They had so many excuses lined up for this L. Oh, well, well, well if the refs weren't on your side, then, 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 then Bama would have won. If, if, if Bryce Dunn was 100% in the game, Squeetari, we would have won the game. If Alabama had a Derek, if they had Derek Henry running the ball, then they would have beaten Tennessee last year. Like, hey, man, look, 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 look. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to explain this to you the best way that I can, okay? Okay? Listen up. Listen up. You listen? Good, good. Okay. I want you to go to your sister slash cousin slash wife, because we know they're all three of them. I want you to ask her what the score was of that Tennessee-Alabama game last season. What the score was. 52 to 49. That's the final score. The funniest part about this, uh, about the win last season, was that all throughout the week, Bama fans were explaining to everybody that would listen that they had the best, de one of the best defenses in the country. They had a lockdown defense that was able to shut down anybody in the country. They would be able to destroy anybody. They just didn't have an offense that was good. The offense shows up, and uh, well, the defense. Uh, I'll, I'll let the clip show for itself. Pucker going deep. Man's there. Got it. Jalen Hyatt, touchdown. Pump fakes one way, comes back the other. Jalen Hyatt. Otherwise, these big pass plays won't be there. There's a pass play that's there. Down the middle. Got him on the fly. It's Hyatt again, and he's going to take it. And then Hooker pulls it, throws it. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jalen Wright. Hyatt, rather. His fifth of the day. Absolutely hilarious. Nick Saban himself literally got down on his knees, went straight up to Jalen Hyatt, and basically just held up the Bolitnikoff for him. So fast forward a few weeks after that magnificent L Alabama took, they get another wholesale ass whooping, this time to Mr. BK himself, Burger King, Brian Kelly beats Alabama in, at LSU. You done lost to Brian freaking Kelly, man. That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. And Nick Saban knew how embarrassing it was, too. Because after that, nobody would listen to him. The best part about it. Okay, okay, so I want you to picture being an Alabama fan right now. You have a head coach, Nick Saban, that for years and years and years has been featured in everyone's eye as the head, uh, the best head coach 
in college football history. He's better than Bear Bryant and all this. Like everybody was talking about it. Nick Saban, best coach in college football. Every time he speaks, you better listen to him. He's he's the best, you know, he he's the best coach ever, and everything he says is something you need to take take notice of. Well, fast forward to the end of the 2022 season, and here's what Nick Saban's going around telling everybody. It's not fair that we're not in the 14 playoffs. I know we have two losses, but we were favored against Tennessee and LSU. And Bryce Young, he was not 100%. Just making a bunch of excuses. A bunch of excuses for an L that he took. Two. Two L's. Uh, 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 Guitar. Yeah. Tennessee had two losses too. Remember that South Carolina loss? Yeah, I sure do. But you know who didn't remember? Everybody friggin' else. Josh Heupel didn't peep one word on national television after taking that loss other than the post-game press conference. Nick Saban, on the other hand, weeks after the game, he's sitting there up at 11 p.m. at night on the Pac-12 network crying to everybody and telling them, oh, we were favored in all of our games. We need to be in the college football playoffs. No! No, you're not! We'd be favored against everybody that we played in the playoffs. You won it. And whoever was in the playoffs, whether it's Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, TCU, whoever it was is what wound up beat the ever-living breaks off of you in that in that matchup anyway. So it's just best that you weren't even there. Imagine that, man. 10, a, ten and 2. And the sky is falling. Everything's falling apart. You saw it all offseason. Nick Saban fires his head coaches. He brings in Tommy Reese and Kevin Steele. And the shocking revelation that everybody was waiting to find out is, well, are they good? <laughs> Breaking news. 2023 is rolling on by. We're halfway through the season. Alabama's already taken a loss. And so is Tennessee. The only difference is Swamp Voodoo's a curse. Bama just sucks. They lost at home to Texas by 10 points. And the narrative after that game was the best part about it. The narrative after that game. Oh, you don't want to play an angry Alabama after they lose. After Alabama loses the game, they're unbeatable. I'll tell you that much. Well, we found out real quick that that wasn't the case. Here goes Bama a week after the Texas game tied with South Florida on the fourth quarter. <laughs> Tennessee, man. Tennessee, man, celebrating this game as if they won the Super Bowl. Well, we're already 1-0 in Super Bowls, first of all. And secondly, yes, of course Tennessee fans are celebrating that win. It was a huge win for the program. In Josh Heupel's second season at Tennessee, he knocks off Nick Saban. And he's partly the reason why Saban has been spending all these, all these months crying and crying about, we should be in the playoffs, you need to stop disrespecting Alabama. You know what he reminds me of now? Ryan Day. Is he just the new Ryan Day? Ryan Day gets on social media every day. No, he just gets up on a mic and tells everybody, oh, uh, uh, Lou Holtz, screw you, bro. Ohio State, the real deal. And now you got Nick Saban running around telling everybody that they need to, they need to, re, they need to respect Alabama. Nobody cares about no Alabama. Tennessee is basically going to absolutely annihilate you when we roll into Alabama and take that dub. We're going to get another W on you. I mean... Let's just be real here. That's just what's happening. Alabama can't run the ball to save their life. We already know that. They couldn't run it against A&M. They couldn't run it against Arkansas. They couldn't run it against anybody that they played. They've been so heavily reliant on a run game that their head rusher is Jalen Milrow. Their quarterback is their best rusher on the team. Alabama can't run the ball. And unfortunately for them, you know, it's funny too because the whole narrative going into the season was that Bama's bringing back the, uh, the old school offense, they're going to pound you. They're going to just run on through you. And that's just all there's going to be to it. Bama's just going to have a bunch of running backs who are just going to run right through you. We're bringing that back, back that ground pound offense. Well, unfortunately for you, it seems that Josh Heupel went ahead and not only stole a W from you, but he also took your playbook. Because all we've been doing is running all over everybody. And Bama can't stop us either. You can guarantee that. Look, Joe Milton can come out and have a bad performance like he did against Texas A&M, and it won't make a difference. We will crush Alabama regardless of whether or not Joe Milton shows up or not. And I guarantee you this, Bama. Just you wait. Just you wait. You've been laughing at Joe Milton. I get it. I get it. Joe Milton hasn't shown up uh, all that recently. 
However, that changes. Joe Milton's going to ball out on you bums this Saturday in Tusca friggin' Lusa. I can guarantee you that. Bama fans have been so, so, so salty this la this entire year. They they're still talking about, there's should a bit bad interference on Tennessee. They're grasping at straws for anything they can point out to make that loss last year go away. And they're doing the same thing this year since they lost to UT friggin' Jr. And if you can't beat UT Jr., what are the chances of you beating you friggin' T? Zero. Zero. Look, Bama fan, I hate to be the bearer of bad... Actually, no, I love to be the bearer of bad news on this information. So listen up. I know you guys have a shared IQ of syntax error, but I'm going to explain this to you the best way I can. Uh, the streak's over. The streak's gone. Uh, whatever streak, 15 years in a road tweet, whatever streak that you had over Tennessee, it's meaningless. Absolutely no meaning at all because it's gone it doesn't exist anymore but there is a current streak right now and that streak is tennessee currently owns you so you better get it together otherwise tennessee's liable to dominate you like we did back in the 90s so bama fan bama man and the bama football team get ready for what is going to be the absolute whooping of a lifetime. The Tennessee Vols are going to absolutely roll all over you. The streak is not going away anytime soon. Tennessee is rolling into Tuscaloosa on a Tennessee Saturday night, and they're going to clobber y'all. All of y'all bums are going down. Vols win, and we're going to put the whooping of an absolute friggin' lifetime on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Go Vols, baby! Woo! Whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey!